Hey guys, so I just wanted to give you an updated price target for Beyond and also give you a price target for Oatly as well, because as we know, Oatly just IPO'd and I have to say that I kind of underestimated their potential here. Um, if you haven't seen my last video where I talk about their potential, go look at that. So basically what I did is I just expanded my uh, Excel sheet from the last video here and I just added a couple columns here. So I'm gonna explain how all of this works. So the valuation basically starts here with the, uh, the addressable market size in 2030, which as you guys know, again from the last video, I have the plant-based meat industry potentially capturing 154 billion of the 1.5 trillion uh, dollar meat industry which would be 10 percent of that and then i also have the plant-based dairy industry capturing 50 percent of the of the dairy industry's estimated size by 2024 now in the last video i had i had that at 75 percent but actually i upped it to 85 percent just because uh I didn't, I didn't account for uh, ice cream in that because they didn't really have ice cream on that distribution chart. So with ice cream taken into account, I believe that uh, Oatly has the potential to capture 85% of the dairy industry. I mean, not, not Oatly by themselves, you know, but they're able to capture, but their products are able to address 85% of that dairy industry, if you guys uh, know what I'm saying with that. And then we get down to the market share, assuming 25% of the addressable market is captured. Now, as you guys know, um, I have 25% for Beyond because they have the first mover advantage, the superior product, and the household name slash pure plant-based meat play. Again, guys, people get really excited for pure companies, just like how people got excited for Tesla being the first pure EV company. Beyond was the first pure plant-based meat company. And Oatly also has that advantage as being one of the first, or if not the first, plant-based, purely plant-based oat company. They purely focus on plant-based oat milk and oat products. So yeah, Beyond could capture 25% of that, giving them a $38.5 billion share of the market. And I believe Oatly, they could potentially capture 25% of the market, but again, there's a lot higher competition in the plant-based dairy sector for, for that. So for that reason, I think 15% is more fair. Although there was this British dude on CNBC, and you know he's smart because he's British. He was saying that wherever Oatly goes, they tend to capture 50% to 60% of the plant-based milk market wherever they end up appearing. I think he said in Sweden and in Germany, they capture 50 to 60%. Whereas in the US, it's only 14%, but that can be, but that can be attributed to people still not realizing how good oat milk is and they're still stuck with their almond milk because almond milk is still the most popular category in the US, but I think that will, but I think that will eventually shift to Oatly and oat milk as more people uh, find out about it. Again, the Starbucks deal is probably gonna help with that a lot. And then right here, we have the current stock prices of both. I just, you know, rounded them down to even numbers just to make it easier. And we have their current market caps, Beyond's being uh, 6.68 billion and Oatly's being around 13 billion. Again, not 100% accurate, but it's in the ballpark. And then I have the estimated price to sales ratio in 2030. So uh, one thing you, you guys are gonna notice that's different from my first Beyond Me valuation video is I'm using a different valuation this time. I'm using price to sales. And the reason I'm using price to sales because I think it's more useful to use price to sales for a company that isn't making money yet because it's harder to calculate the PE ratio when both companies are unprofitable, right? So I think a PS ratio is easier in that regard. So a lot of you guys are probably gonna be confused like why I have such low PS ratios for both these companies in 2030. And the reason for that is right now they have very high PS ratios and that's because they're very volatile right now. They're, they're still in their growth phase. And I do believe that they're gonna exponentially grow over the next couple of years and eventually that will you know, become smaller and smaller and they will become more stable in their growth and it will eventually stabilize. And I think when it finally does stabilize and we start seeing these revenues actually come in, then the PS ratios are gonna, well, they're gonna be dropped by then obviously because it's gonna be a slow, slow decline of the PS ratio as the years go by. And I'm sure eventually PE ratios will take over by then because they'll be making profits and everything. But again, PS ratios are just interesting to look at anyways. And to be honest, I got a pretty similar price target using the PS ratio as I did with my PE ratio uh, valuation for Beyond. So the reason I chose a 2 PS ratio for Beyond is because is because I believe that they're a tech stock because they have all this technology, they have all these food scientists. They are a tech stock, they trade on the NASDAQ, which most tech stocks trade on. You know, there's a lot of reasons I think they're a tech stock, I'm not gonna get into all of them right now. And most tech stocks trade at a two times PS ratio, so that's the reason for that. And so that would be two times their revenue, and that's how you get their market cap of 77 billion. And for Oatly, I have a 1.77 PS ratio, and how I got that is that they're one of their main competitors, Danon, has a 1.77 PS ratio. You know, they're a dairy company that's making plant-based milk, so that's where I got the 1.77. And again, that times their potential future revenue gets you a $113 billion potential market cap. And then guys, how we get the share price is pretty simple. We just take their expected revenue times that by the PS ratio to get what the future market cap would be. And then we divide that by the current market cap to get the multiple that it would be. And then we times that multiple 
by the current stock price and that is how we get the future stock price so in terms of multiples here that's an 11.5x for beyond from its current price and an 8.7x from oatley's current price because they are a little bit overvalued currently so that is why they have the lower multiple and again guys not sure if i already said this or not but this is assuming a 15 percent market share of the plant-based dairy industry for oatley now if you want to bump that up to 25 percent, then we get a pretty crazy 188 billion dollar market cap for oatly so that would be pretty insane but again i'm going a little bit more conservative here with 15 percent so yeah guys that's pretty much it i'm going to leave this for download in the description just like i did with my last one if you guys want to try to fiddle around with it put your own numbers in just have fun with it so again you know take this with a grain of salt i mean i'm not sure how accurate this is i, I was just kind of having fun you know making this and uh thought it'd be fun to share with you guys but i think there's some accuracy to it i mean these could be some pretty outlandish predictions but i mean we, again, we had that poll where 50% of Americans said that they were planning on drinking plant-based milk. I mean, that isn't a global thing for sure. But, you know, who knows? The paradigm shift might happen pretty drastically for all we know. So these could be pie-in-the-sky numbers, guys. But for me, I think that they're fairly reasonable that they could happen in the future. And that's going to do it for this video, guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if the idea of a Beyond Meat-themed channel sounds cool to you, please consider subscribing.